When it comes to learning Go, there are a number of different approaches that you can take. Personally, one of my favorite ways to learn a new programming language is to build something with it. But knowing what to build in order to gain a good understanding of the language can sometimes be difficult. So in this video, I'm going to share five project ideas that I believe are great for learning Go. The first project idea is a bit of a classic. The humble to-do list application. However, rather than building this out as a web app using a front-end framework, instead building it for the terminal with a command line interface. By doing so, this project will teach you a few key concepts when it comes to Go, such as how to read and write data from the file system, presenting information to the user in a tabular format, and building a CLI application that can handle multiple commands. In my own version, I decided to implement the following four, which enables me to add tasks to my to-do list using the add command, print all of my tasks to the console using the list command, mark any tasks as being done by using the complete command, and use the delete command to remove any tasks from the data store. For the data store itself, I would recommend starting with something simple. In my case, I decided to go with a CSV file, which is a pretty simple format for storing data. Additionally, Go provides the encoding slash CSV package as part of the standard library, which makes it very simple to get started using CSV without any third-party dependencies. Some of the other notable packages that I used in my own implementation include the text slash tab writer package, which makes it easy to print out text in a tabular format, the time diff package by MergeStat, which is used to print out human readable time differences, and the fantastic Cobra package by SPF, which is probably the gold standard when it comes to building out command line interfaces in Go. Cobra also provides its own CLI application to make it simple to get started. In my case, I used it to both initialize my application and to also add the various subcommands to it. For a full list of the packages that I used, I've created a GitHub repository for this project and all the other projects on this video. This repo also contains some more information to help you get started, such as example code or supplementary resources, technical considerations to be aware of, and any additional features you may want to add. In the case of the to-do list, some examples include replacing the data store from CSV to SQLite, and adding the ability to set an optional due date when you create a new task. Overall, this project should teach you how to build a CLI app when it comes to Go. However, if you're more interested in web technologies, then this next project may be more your thing. The second project idea is yet another classic, building a backend web API. This is a pretty common use case of Go, and so it's a great way to experience what using Go is like in a professional setting. However, just like the to-do list, this project also has a bit of a twist. Rather than building a typical CRUD application, instead the idea is to build a fully stateless API, meaning you can focus more on the API implementation than worrying about any data stores. The API I like to build in order to achieve this is a calculator service, supporting basic calculation operations, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. To help you with the design of your calculator service, I've created an open API specification that you can view. This will highlight all of the different endpoints as well as their input parameters and expected results. When it comes to building out your web API, I recommend starting with the net slash HTTP package of the standard library. By doing so, it'll introduce you to some of the common patterns and idioms found in Go. Whilst this project may seem simple on the surface, there's actually a number of different considerations, such as performing validation on your input data and adding in middleware in order to log out each request. You can find a list of these requirements inside of the project's readme. If you're interested in a career doing backend web development in Go, and like me, you also happen to enjoy playing RPGs, then you may be interested in Boot.dev, who are the sponsors of today's video. Boot.dev is an online learning platform that can teach you all of these skills for web development from start to finish, in both Python and Go. The folks at Boot.dev believe the best way to learn is to make sure you're never bored, and therefore have taken on inspiration from modern game design, adding in the ability to earn experience points, gain levels, and unlock achievements, all of which makes learning backend web development both fun and enjoyable. 
As well as being fun, each course is designed to get you writing a ton of code, which means your hands will be on the keyboard and you'll actually ship projects, which, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to learn. In order to see if boot.dev is right for you, every course on the platform comes with a free demo, which includes the course's interactive features. Not only this, but every lesson on boot.dev is available to read for free as well. If that's not enough, boot.dev comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. So, to learn all of the skills you need in order to become a back-end web developer in Go, visit boot.dev using the link in the description down below. Additionally, if you use my promo code, Dreams of Code, you'll receive 25% off your first payment. That's 25% off either your first month or your first year. A big thank you to boot.dev for sponsoring this video. The third project idea on this list is to build a web scraper to detect dead links. A dead link is a link on a web page that, when visited, will either time out or returns a status code in the 400 or 500 range. For example, 404, which means not found. The goal of this project is to build a CLI application that takes the URL of the website you wish to scrape. The application will then recursively scan through any links it detects on that web page, checking to see if each one is valid. Any dead links that it detects are then logged to the console. In order to go along with this project, I've created a supplementary website that you can use for testing. You can either run this website yourself locally, or you can hit the hosted version for as long as it's running. There's a link to both in the project's GitHub README. This website contains a number of dead links for you to detect, as well as a few different edge cases that you'll need to handle. A couple of examples of these edge cases include handling redirects and making sure to not check pages you've already visited. Additionally, you'll also want to make sure that the web scraper doesn't go beyond this base domain. For example, on the test web page, I have a couple of links to external sites such as YouTube and Facebook. Whilst you'll want to check that these links are valid, make sure to not check any of the actual links on these pages themselves. As for which packages to use for building this project, I recommend going with the net slash HTTP package of the standard library in order for making the HTTP requests. Then when it comes to parsing the actual HTML, I recommend going with the net slash HTML package found in the standard library extensions. This will allow you to easily parse and tokenize the HTML body. One thing to be aware of, however, is that this form of scraping won't work for any JavaScript-based websites. For that, you'll need to use a headless browser, such as the Playwright Go package. This is a pretty great way to expand the project, however. Another great approach is to add in concurrency. This can enable you to scrape multiple pages at the same time, which should improve the performance of your web scraper. In order to add concurrency, you'll need to understand and know how to use both Go routines and channels. Additionally, you may want to consider the single flight package as well, which can be used to prevent multiple requests going to the same URL. Whilst we're on the topic of URLs, the fourth and perhaps my favorite project idea on this list is building out a URL shortener website using only Go. The goal of this project is to build a simple web application where you can submit a URL to a form. Upon doing so, you should then receive a shortened URL back, which if you then copy and paste into your browser, should take you to the URL you submitted. As with most of the projects on this video, I have my own example application that you can try out. You can find this at the following URL. In order to build a web application using Go, you'll want to use the HTML slash template package found in the standard library. This package uses Go's powerful text templating in order for you to build web pages. To give a quick example of this package in action, here I have a simple templated web page saying hello YouTube. If we take a look at the actual template itself, here you can see that I've templated the name that the website is saying hello to. If we take a look at the Go code, you can see that we have a struct that we're passing in which contains our YouTube name. If I go ahead and change this value from YouTube to Universe, then restart the application and refresh the page, you can see that our name has now changed. Therefore, by using this approach, you can display dynamic data to the user, such as the shortened URL. As for actually handling this shortened URL, this is done by using HTTP redirects. In Go, we can achieve this by using the redirect function of the net slash HTTP package, which, as well as taking the request and response, also takes a URL we wish to redirect to and an HTTP status code. Here, you'll want to decide whether to use the HTTP HTTP found status code, which is 302, or the HTTP status code of moved permanently, which is a 301. Each of these behaves in a slightly different way, so I'd recommend doing some research and deciding which one you want to use. 
As well as handling redirects, you'll also want to consider what happens if you're given a URL that doesn't exist. In my case, I both return a status code of 404 and render out a web page letting the user know what went wrong. If you like building user interfaces when it comes to Go, my last project idea may also interest you as well. This project is to build a currency converter. Again, this is going to be an application for the terminal. However, rather than it being a command line interface, instead, this is going to be driven with a terminal UI, also known as a TUI. This TUI is powered by the wonderful Huh library from Charm Bracelet, which allows you to easily create great looking input forms for terminal applications. In my implementation, I'm using this form to collect the two currencies that the user wishes to convert between, as well as collecting the amount in the base currency. Then, once the user submits the form, the application performs the currency conversion and prints the result to the console. As well as teaching you how to build a TUI application, this project will also teach you how to interface with a third-party API, specifically for obtaining the currency data. In my case, I'm using the API provided by openexchangerates.org which is free to use, but does require signing up in order to do so. Additionally, you'll also need to generate a token in order to use the API, which also means you'll need to learn how to handle secrets securely inside of your code base. I have another video that touches on secrets management. However, the TLDR is to make sure to use environment variables rather than hard coding this token in. The project readme gives you some guidance on how you can do this. With that, we now have five project ideas to inspire you to get started learning Go. If you'd like to see how I implemented these projects, or you're interested in some more advanced project ideas, then let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, a big thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.